Good morning. It's almost eight in the morning now, and we're going to go on a pro proper road trip today. Uh, we will go from Oslo to uh, Alvdal. Uh, Alvdal is finally opening. I own it. Uh, yes. Mm. And I'm Mr. Österdal, so I'm going to go there and uh, see the opening. Yeah, I charged the car to 100%. We are not preheating. The bacon is on. And you see, we're actually not pulling. Yeah, we're not pulling from the battery, so we're pulling power from the grid. That's good design. Some cars, they don't always do that. But okay, uh, let's just get going. I have to charge on the way there. I think my first stop will be uh, Elverum. Yeah. We are at our first starting stop, already at 133 kilometers. Here in Elvedem, Ayunti, I'm the only one charging here. So uh, we can look at the screen. This is the new design. You guys have seen it some other places. So I wonder what, which design they will use in the, in Alvdal. But uh, yeah, okay, I'm getting 45 kilowatts, <laughs> 125 amp. But let me show you inside. So, uh, Oh man, the car is getting dirty. <sighs> yeah. So this app here is called Electrified. So many people ask, hey, what app is that? What app is that? It's called Electrified. It's free. When I mean it's kostenlos, yeah. Or gratis. So, uh, okay, you see the car is taking 125 amp. We're getting 45 kilowatts. Uh, having the bacon on, you can see here, this one. So if you find, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the auxiliary heater on. I have a theory that if you have the auxiliary heater on while charging, then the cooling is not running and then the, the car will rapid gate. So I will uh, test it today. I think I will also record a, a session here, maybe on the way back, something. Oh, I see a slight throttling. Okay, I mean, we are right by the break point now. But uh, we haven't seen 49 kilowatt like usual. We've been hovering on 44 kilowatt for a while. And you see this one here is higher than usual, almost 36 degrees. So uh, it's supposed to be around 32 degrees only. Uh, we started a bit high though. So next time I will, when, before I do the recording, I will start with around 10%. But uh, I think we're almost good to go. So. Next stop, which is the final destination for the day, is Alvdal. That's 168 kilometers from here. So I calculated that if I charge to about 90%-ish, maybe 95 even, this car goes qu quite fast to 95%. And then beyond 96, 97%, it goes slow. So yeah, let's go to about 95 then, and then off we go. We are finally here, and finally, Ionity Alvdal is up and running. So, um, I thought it was supposed to be a big party here. It's actually not. 
Not this time, no. I've been at some bigger parties, but this one is more just uh, okay. I have to show you guys. So, four of these, you see the same one we have at Elvirum. So, I think Ionity from now on they will use these type of uh, chargers. Are they uh, tritium or what, what are they? Yeah, it's still tritium, you see. It says Ionity Stream Dispenser Electric Vehicle Ultra. This is ultra schnell, yeah, from Australia, okay? So, uh, anyway, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> They're pink. You know, I don't know if you, you know, fun fact, if these, these chargers, you see, it has a proximity sensor there. And then when I approach or when a car approaches, the light, they will change. Let's see, how is this again? There, 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 you see? Wait, I have to trigger it. Come on, kick, kick sensor. Well, it will, it will, it will do the little dance there. And then it will light up. And uh, also here, this, this uh, LED bar, what they will show you state of charge, you see, I'm kind of low. I came in with 10%. Look at this e-tron. Oh, the e-tron is, e-tron is almost full. 96%. <laughs> okay, and what about the... Yeah, this is also a... Uh, um, Ionity car. Kona. Yeah, you see, Kona is also almost full. These guys have been here a while. How long have they been here? Okay. One hour. One... Over one hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we now have Jan Hugen Ile here. Also known as the rock star, uh, head of Europe, uh, Ionity. And uh, Jan, I want to ask you the story about this. You know, this one is a special one, right? Yes, this is very special because this is this area is uh, has flood problem actually. So so the water can get quite high. Uh, so that's why we had to raise this uh, charging area with approximately 60 to 70 centimeters. So it's on the same level as the main road. It, it was uh, so it was delayed because it. Was Yes, because we were waiting for, uh, so to say, from the uh, permission from the authority and they wanted to calculate how high we must be so we can so to say, survive the two years, 200 years flood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but let's check over there a little bit. So Jan, uh, behind me here we have some boxes and stuff. Can you explain what this is and the whole design here? Yeah. Due to the flood, we have to raise them even more because that's the technical equipment to make sure that they don't get water into the technical equipment. The biggest gray one there, the dark one, that's the grid station uh, with a total effect of 1,250 kilowatt, um, who is divided on this uh, six charger. Now it's four, but we have made room for two more under this uh, lids. Oh, okay. And the white closet there, that's the power unit. So, so they are supporting the, the, the charger and there is room for even one more so we can add two charger and one uh, power unit extra. So it seems like this has been raised even higher than the station, right? Yeah, that's true. That's a, just to make it sure. We also discuss if we should have some kind of automatic turn down, but, but at the moment it's raised so high. So, so we don't think there will be any problem with flood for the technical equipment. So it, it seems like the transformer is even higher than the main road now. That's correct. It's even higher. <laughs> okay. Yes. Was it was it the requirement or did you guys do it extra? We do it. Uh, the requirement was that we raise the charging area up to this limit. That was a requirement to get the building permit. But this extra centimeter for the technical equipment, that was something that we choose to do to be on the safe side. So what if? If something happens and the massive flood comes and let's say people are charging here, what happens then if the water comes? We need to turn down the power. Manually? Yeah, we have remote control so we can do it remotely. And uh, is it dangerous? No, it's not because we will turn down the power and if it's so high, I also think the grid company needs to turn down the power for a lot of uh, equipment around in this area. Okay. We're now in the back side of the chargers and here you put the fences also, right? 
Yes, that's for uh, if uh, children or, or uh, adults are walking around up uh, around the technical equipment, so that they don't fall down and so to say break legs or, or get injured. So that's why we set up the fence for security for the people at the charging station. Oh, nice! And also, you guys can hear we have, we have lots of trucks here, but uh, you made some entrance here, right? Yeah, to make it possible to drive uh, in or out on this side or on the other side. We block this area so it's possible to drive here because this is an area where trucks are parking so we need to reserve this entrance from both sides. So yeah, it seems like you've made this trailer friendly. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is a, I think it's a popular spot for trailers to park. You see we have them around us, that the noise. So we needed to make this, uh, to reserve this entrance for the EV driver so they can come both ways depending on which side they have the outlets and so on and if they have a trailer so they don't have to back very very nice but okay uh, you know i did some calculation here and uh, we have lots of fortum chargers in Österdal, but this one uh, because we have uh, four times let's say e-tron this this is uh, jan's e-tron uh, let's say if we, these if e-trons are charging here, they can get 150 kilowatt each. So that means four, four times 150 kilowatts, so 600 kilowatts. And if you count all the other Fortum sites, they have two times 50 kilowatt only. It means that this site alone uh, doubles the capacity of Österdal. I don't know if you guys, have you thought about that before? Yeah. No, I haven't done that calculation. And actually just to add, each charger here can deliver 350. And the green station is on 1,250, so even the double of the 600. But yes, we give a lot of capacity and that makes it easier for uh, the one driving long distance uh, who has the opportunity to charge faster than 50 kilowatts. What? Did you, did you travel here this summer? No, I wasn't in Estonland this summer. <laughs> you should have. You should have. It, should was, have. it was chaos uh, over there. Yeah. yeah, hopefully we can help with, with, with that challenge and chaos and also if we get a lot of queue here, it's very easy to add to extra. Oh, so you can get six, just, just like that? Yes, and that will take a couple of days and then we can get uh, uh, six in total, yes. But, you know, people travel north of, there is a country north of Trondheim, so do you guys have any plans north of Trondheim? Uh, I've got this. Uh, I received this question quite a lot, and unfortunately, I can't share the plans. But of course, uh, Norway is a long country, so let's see what happens in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, this is great news, man. Finally, I mean, I'm, I'm Mr. Österdal. I always drive Österdal, and actually, this station also means that Österdal is now faster than Gubbrandstad for e-tron. Before e-tron had to go, well, yeah, e-tron was almost about as fast to go Gudbrandstad. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is great news. Uh, so I think there's some cake inside Circle K, right? Yes, there are cake because uh, Circle K has been the, the business of the year in this area. So they are celebrating and we are celebrating the opening of the 301st uh, uh, charging station in Europe. So we combined it and therefore we have a cake. Yeah. Well, so, th so this is number 301. Yeah, this is uh, this is number three hundred and one, and we have still fifty-two under construction. Fifty-two, oh, but but okay. Uh, do, do you guys have a number somewhere? I mean, the the number of this one, you know, like Tesla, they have a badge. Yeah, we, yeah, we have a number, but it's more internal, so so oh, that's okay. not helpful. But but it's number three hundred and one in line. You you can see the number on on the stickers on the chargers. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, 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 the QR code, yeah, all right, yeah. Okay, but I think I'm gonna go in, get some cake, yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, so here we have the cake, marzipan cake, and um, uh, this Stroker K station was um, crowned uh, the, the, the company of the year around, around Aldal. So that's why they celebrate with cake. So the, the cake was not primarily for the Ionity, but it is to combine it. So free cake for everyone. Okay, I just had to get a hot dog. I will not double eat it this time. But did you know that 
this gas station here is open 24 7. Because I remember I came here. You guys remember, it was, it was with a transporter diesel. And I think I came here after 10 or something in the evening and it was closed, but that was many years ago. And then I asked the staff here, hey, when did you guys change it to 24 seven? And they say, three years ago, <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> I haven't paid attention. I, I drive past it all the time. So it turns out that, um, you know, it's very strict about the rules here uh, by the government that the, there is a sign outside here showing the, the gas price but they can't just add extra tag for 24 7. They, they, what they have there is what they have available very strict they are not allowed to show more so they just have a little sign in the window here saying 24 hours so did you guys know i bet you didn't all right jan with the e-tron 50 here he's going back to oslo so uh, he said that he can't make it to Oslo, so he has to go to Elverum. So I guess I might meet him at Elverum, because I'm going to try to document this rapid gate. It seems to have rapid gated slightly, slight rapid gate. We'll be in one hour. <laughs> okay, good to go. Yeah, I think it should be, should be nice and warm in here, right? because I kept, I kept the bacon running. Oh yeah, you see here, bacon for the win. We are now at uh, uh, Ionity again, Elvirum. So um, Jan, he came here before me, so he is good to go already. He just needed to top up a little bit. And uh, his car charges so fast, but you know, f this is funny because uh, you see, you see how he parks? Even, even Ionity's boss parks like that. <laughs> you see, you see uh, I told you that the, these lines make no sense. He parks over the line. I don't know if this is an Audi thing or... <laughs> but um, these cables are quite flexible on the other hand. Uh, so maybe Jan, you can show me how flexible these cables are. Well, let me go on this side. Oh yeah, you, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah, so... Let's see if I... So this this is the Audi thing. Yeah, okay, there you go. Okay, you can you can pull it all the way there. Yeah, all right, all right. So, but it was just a, for for convenience because, uh, for the record, this one is kaput right now. So that's why no one can use it. Yeah, this one is dead. But okay, so he's leaving, and. Uh, Ah, okay, <laughs> you see, everyone parks bad, even me, so at least I have an excuse, right? Or do I? Hmm. Okay, there, off he goes in his e-tron. And okay. Right now I'm recording. I'm not sure if I will, uh, if I will rapid gate or not. We'll see, we'll see. Because I arrive with uh, about 25-27%, that's kind of high. Ideally, I want to arrive with 10%, but okay. Okay, but this, if I get good enough data, I can use this charting session uh, to discuss about the, the, the rapid gate on this car. So, all right, let me see now. Let me plot in. Uh, oh, give me, sh I'm going to show you. So, this is pretty cool. All right, we will navigate. We go here. No, wait. Huh? No. Nine. Start engine. Okay. Uh, enter new destination. Quick search. If we search, you can, you can, 
you know you can tie it here. Space. No, no, no. Delete. A. C. No. Delete. L. N. A. Alna. Space. Sente. S. E. R. No. Nine. Delete. N. Full stop. No, no, no. Delete. Wait. T. Uh, it's a lowercase and uppercase. All no send the K. No, what that? E. R. Isn't it called all the center? Muslim center. No. Ah, uh, this would work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You see, you can type. You can type on the iDrive. It's so, it's so convenient to do this while you're driving. It's so intuitive. Yeah, you know what? It's not intuitive. Uh, if you go here, and if you go down here to the interactive map, and you know, you can, you can do like, this is weird shit. It's like 80s uh, game. Uh, but you can also swipe. Yeah, I can show you here. You can swipe and you can also pinch. But the problem is that when you swipe down, you go down. If you swipe up, you go up. It, it's counterintuitive because it's not like how I m most screens or whatever touchscreen works. And at least pinching, pinching works like it's supposed to be. You pinch like this. So. I wish there was a way to reverse the logic here, but it doesn't seem like it can do that. Okay, how do we go back? Back, there's a back button. Yeah, 133 kilometers to Oslo. Wow. We are now on the motorway and it's quite windy today and <laughs> this car becomes kind of unstable because of the wind and also because of the high speed. So sometimes in the wind gust, it throws the car sideways. <laughs> it's quite uh, interesting to drive the i3 today. at Nebes juicing up so this time yes uh, it should be better because uh, it's a more uh, realistic case where we hammer it on the motorway battery was about 28 degrees Celsius when we plug it in and now we'll see then uh, I need to charge to 85% at least it's still windy outside Oof. but uh, you know you probably haven't noticed uh, well actually maybe you noticed but here we have the old camera, or actually not the old, well, I'm still using it. This camera that I'm pointing at right now is the camcorder. In the daytime, it's superb. It's actually sharper than the DSLR, but then at night it becomes blurry-ish because it has to boost up gain or ISO, you know. And then this camera here that I'm pointing at now, that is the DSLR with a Sigma lens. So. Again, in the daytime, it's not that sharp. I actually don't use it much to film the road. When I'm filming a road, I will be using the, the camcorder. And actually, most of the stuff is with the camcorder. But then, when I'm stationary, like now, then I can use the DSLR. So I will actually, um, I think I'm going to buy a Canon um, HF 
G60. It has a bigger sensor. It's still a camcorder. It has a bigger sensor, and uh, the low light conditions look way way cleaner with the uh, with the G60 versus the G50. But uh, yeah, you know, you guys probably never noticed that uh, the the camcorder kind of struggles it in the evening. So, all right now we wait. Alright, we're finally back home. So that was a nice trip, 600 kilometers uh, roughly. And average consumption was 206 watt uh, per kilometer. So, yeah, about one third of the route here is motorway with 100, 110 kilometers per hour speed limit. So that's why the consumption is high. But uh, okay, and also my finding at Nebenes, um this car, the BMW i3, will rapid gate under the, let's say, the worst conditions. But uh, I will come back to that. I have to look more in the in the recording I did. But uh, normally it doesn't rapid gate. Uh, it's just that, yeah, and you can easily avoid the rapid gate. It's not like a Leaf or an E-Golf. But uh, yeah, okay. Um, I think it's gonna go inside and slack for today, but you know, big shout out to iMove who lent me this car because by using this car for a while, I can learn a lot about it and find bugs or issues or even solutions to bugs. You know, so good stuff. Uh, iMove, thank you very much for lending me the i3. So uh, I'm going to return it on Monday. By the way, yeah, I think I'm. I feel like I'm done with the i3 now because you know yeah okay I should um, explain that most of the time when I borrow cars from uh, the, the importers right let's say Mölle from uh, I mean um, ID3 from Mölle or Kia from Bartlosten then I usually just borrow it a couple of days and I only do whatever test range test or go on a road trip and then I don't spend enough time uh, discovering stuff like I do with this one uh, I don't remember how long I kept this car but uh, I think it was uh, several weeks maybe that's a, that's the next thing I should do next time is that when I borrow a press car I should try to request borrowing for two three weeks <laughs> Yeah, but um, all right, I think that's gonna be it for now. Yeah, finally, Österdorn has been reinforced with Alvdal uh, Ionity. Oh man, oh, great. So that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.